What gets us going every day? Courage. It's what we have to be to open doors to people, to engage in new paths, to find solutions that make a difference. Love, sincerity, and knowledge. The world needs people like that to educate, decorate, and prepare them for what lies ahead. We find one good reason to keep going in the face of a thousand reasons to stop. We are Al Khadam, and we are serving mankind, serving the needs of the new Muslims through our New Muslims Community Program. We have been engaging with people of all faiths and witnessed thousands of reversions under the guidance of Sheikh Hussein Yi, our founder and president, serving the needs of the less privileged through our squad Prihatin Kimiskinan, a joint collaboration with super thinkers. Besides the usual monthly assistance, we also guide them to be able to stand on their own two feet through our program Minjana Pendapatan dan Pekerjaan. On top of that, we provide other forms of aid such as special requirements assistance, house repairs, and other programs and activities. Serving the leaders of tomorrow through our youth development programs. We have a holistic approach in our center for our youth to experience and understand the deen and dunya. With programs and workshops across the year, we reach out to all personalities of life, from the youth, the learners, the adventurous, the mighty, and the artistic. Our efforts to develop children are realized with two professionally run tahfiz centers, our very own Mahad Tahfiz Baitul Rahma, and another through collaboration with Academy Al Khair, serving the needs of the Ummah virtually through the online medium. With over 3 million views on YouTube and counting, our media team aims to create content to be accessible and relatable to all segments of the Ummah. We are united by faith, the Quran, and the Sunnah. We never stop to serve the people and inspire others to do the same. We are Al Khadam and we are serving mankind. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I'm Brother Mushafik and I'll be the MC for the session. Islamic Knowledge in Association with Science and Faith in Al Khadim, Malaysia would like to welcome you for, to today's session on the topic Reliance on Allah by Sheikh Hussein Yee. Trained in the science of Hadith from the leading University of Medina, Muhammad Hussein Abdullah, popularly known as Sheikh Hussein Yee, is an international recognized da'i who focuses on sharing the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and Islam's universal message of peace to Muslims and non Muslims all over the world. He has nearly 40 years of experience in strategic management adversary and consulting to Islamic agencies globally. One of his key interests is promoting family and social harmony and Sheikh's investment, substantial time in family and marriage counseling and youth development. Sheikh Husseini is also the president of Al Qadim Malaysia. Over to you, Sheikh. For this session. Alhamdulillah, in Alhamdulillah. Can everybody hear me? Can, can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, is, is, I I'm just want to check the, my network. Is that okay? Can you see me clearly? And the sound okay, yeah? Okay. Yeah. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'unzu billah min shururi anfusina wa sayyati a'malina. من يهده الله فلا مدلنا وما يتلي الفلاح دينا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسول أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise due to Allah رب العالمين as the Creator of all things the Sender of all prophets and messengers and the revealer of all truth. May the blessing and the mercy of Allah be upon all of us 
who is following us in this program organized by Islamic knowledge, known before as science and faith. And Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because tonight we have our brother, Mushafi, who is going to be our MC. On behalf of Al Qadim, we would like to thank all the brothers and sisters who are with us online because it is really a ni'mah, a blessing of Allah Rabbul Alameen through all the technology that we have today, we are able to continue to understand and learn about our deen in the way that Allah wants us to understand the way the Prophet have taught us. I have started my Muqaddima by reciting the Khutbatul Haja. I would like to share with all our viewers why this Khutbatul Haja is so important and recommended by our Prophet Sallallahu to recite before we start any reminder, any kind of conferences and gathering. It's because Allah Rabbul Alameen and our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu want all of us to learn how to be grateful and be thankful to Allah. And that's why it started in Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. Thanking Allah for all his bounties that we are still alive until today. And not only we are alive, but we are able to spend our time wisely to seek the knowledge of Allah. Known as the pure knowledge. That is not corrupted, altered, changed by anybody. And also the saying of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam that is based on authentic hadith. Not just any saying, but the authentic saying of our Prophet And the power and the important to be thankful, Allah have said to us, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ أَزَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ If we are grateful and thankful towards Allah, then Allah will increase His blessing to upon us. And if we are not grateful and thankful, we take everything for granted, then sooner or later, Allah will take it back and we will suffer from not being grateful and being thankful to Almighty, the Creator. And we keep on asking Allah for help because we need His help. But before we ask Allah for help, we must do our best, do our homework. And this is very, very important. This is also have to do with the topic today about tawakkal. About having faith in Allah Rabbul Alameen. Brothers and sisters, at the same time, we ask Allah for forgiveness. Upon all the mistakes, the weaknesses of our iman. Towards Allah Almighty. Sometimes when Allah put us into a trial and challenges, we start to complain. We start to yeah, lose our faith in Allah. When Allah gives us all the ni'mah, we forget to even be thankful to Him. But when He takes back the ni'mah, we start to complain. So we need Allah to forgive all our weaknesses, our mistakes. Nastaqfiru. And we ask Allah to help us to overcome the weaknesses of our inner self, our iman, who is not consistent. Our iman is not consistent. Always yankus more than yazid. Meaning we know Iman will increase and decrease. It will increase with taqwa, with tawakkal, with sabr, and with rila, that we do everything to please Allah. When we do everything to please Allah, brother and sister, we will never regret. 
even people are not happy with what we can offer, with what we have done for them, we don't have to worry. We don't have to feel bad because we are doing for the sake of Allah and we want Allah's pleasure. But if you are doing something not for the sake of Allah, with a hidden agenda, then you are going to fail yourself. You get upset and you get angry and you may stop, continue doing all the good things. So it's very important to ask Allah to overcome the weaknesses within ourselves. So that whatever we do, we are doing for the sake of Allah. Lillahi ta'ala. Purely for the sake of Allah. This is important. This is where ikhlas comes in. And also we ask Allah to protect us from wasting our time and energy in doing things that do not benefit us. In talking about matters that do not concern us. So this is something we have to keep on asking Allah to guide us, to help us. And we always remember, whatever we do, don't forget the shahadatain. Whoever seek the guidance of Allah, meaning whoever follow the way of Allah, we will never turn astray and nobody can mislead us. Whoever choose not to follow Allah's way, we think that we know better, our way is better, or we follow just any other ways beside the way of Allah. We know we have made a big mistake. Why? Because Allah Rabbul Alameen, when He taught us what to ask in our daily prayer by saying, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, O Allah, guide us to the straight path. We ask Allah for guidance because guidance is a very important thing in our life. Without guidance, we are all a loser. We will live in darkness. But with the guidance of Allah, then all of us will know how to overcome all the challenges, all the trials. And we will never fail ourselves, our family, and the ummah. And when we ask Allah for guidance, brothers and sisters, Allah responds to us. When we said, Ihdina Sirat Mustaqim, Allah responds to us in other surah. Wa anna hadha Sirati Mustaqima. Fattabi'uhu. Wa la tattabi'u subula. Fattafarraqa bikum an sabilihi. Zalikum wassakum bihi la'allakum tattakun. And this is my way when we ask Allah to guide us, to show us His way, Allah's way, remember, His way. Not your way, my way, but His way. Then Allah said, وَأَنَّ حَذَا سِرَاتِي مُسْتَقِيمًا This is my way. فَاتَّبِعُوهُ after Allah showed on his way, he said, follow my way. Now, after you follow Allah's way, Allah do not end and stop there. He continued. When you follow the way of Allah, brothers and sisters, don't ever follow other ways beside the way of Allah. Neither in your way, my way, your opinion, my opinion, the majority, what the Imam said, what our elders said, no. As long as whatever they say to us, do not contradict the way of Allah, call Allah, or call a Rasulullah, 
is fine, no problem. We are still on the right track. Why? Because Allah knows when you don't follow His way, you entertain other than the way of Allah. You entertain your desire, my desire, what the majority want you to do. Then Allah said, you will turn astray. You will be divided. If you choose other way, the other way is sure to divide you and make you confuse. And this is what Allah said. And Allah remind us. So that at the end of the day, we become a muttaqin. A muttaqin is a person who are conscious about Allah, who are connected to Allah in good, bad time. They never disconnect themselves with Allah. And Allah Rabbul Alameen remind us the importance of take good care of our iman. We have the iman already. What we have to do is to make sure that our iman is always strong, is right. Not just feeling, but our iman that is in the heart and in our mind is strong. Like what the Prophet said, Man ahabba lillah, wa abghada lillah, wa a'ta lillah, wa mana'a lillah, faqad istakmal al-iman. Allah is telling us through his Prophet ﷺ. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is conveying this message to us. Whoever loves what Allah loves and hate what Allah hates, mean you like what Allah likes, you dislike what Allah dislikes. Give for the sake of Allah. Anything you want to contribute you want to donate, you want to sadaqah, make sure it's for the sake of Allah to please Him and all the money that you contribute is used in the way that Allah allowed us to use. Not to waste, not to misuse yeah, all the contribution and donation. For the sake of Allah and you don't give. You don't have to support anything that displeases Allah. Even your family, your friend want you to do something and you know that something that they want you to do is displeasing Allah. You don't have to get involved. When you have this form, love what Allah loves, hates what Allah hates, give for the sake of Allah, we hold for the sake of Allah. Then the Prophet said, Faqadis taqmal al iman. And your iman is fine, is sound, is strong, is good. And this is how we check our iman. Like today, we have all this COVID 19, we keep on checking our pressure, our temperature. Yeah? So we have to check our iman. Then Allah. Remind us in Suratul Al Anfal, verse two and verse three. Inna mal mu'minun al lazina ida zukir Allah wa jilat kulubum, wa ida tuliat alehim ayatuhu zadat hum imanan wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. Allah now is guiding us and showing us. Those who believe in Allah, whoever claim that we are a believer, Allah said, the sign, first sign, is, is a zukir Allah wa jilat kulubuhum. When Allah's name is mentioned, his heart or her heart tremble. Meaning, our heart responds to Allah's commandment. When Allah says something, 
our heart always responds samikna wa ta'na. And when the ayat of Allah is being recited, the more you recite the verses of Allah with understanding, your zadathum imanan, your iman will increase. Your iman increase, Allahu Akbar. And this is just an example. And then, wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. The true believer, after they have done their homework, whatever they want from Allah, they have to do what they have to do. They cannot just tawakkal without doing what they have to do. Do your homework. And when you do something for the sake of Allah, guided by your iman, you don't do just for the sake of doing it. But you are going to do in the best form. In the best manner. It's like prayer. It's like anything that you want from Allah. You want the best. So if you want the best, you must give the best that you can offer. You cannot want the best, but you are not giving the best. Then you do tawakkal. Then Allah will respond to your needs. But if you don't receive it now, then that's why Allah wants you to have patience, sabr. In Allah ma'asabiri, and Allah said, I am with those who have sabr, who have patience. Why? Because after you want something from Allah, you have done your homework, and you make tawakkal to Allah, you must have that faith. Allah is sure to respond to your need, but according to His time, not your time or my time, according to the time of Allah, where He feels fit. Because Allah did remind us, there are times you want so many things from Allah, you try to do your best, but then you don't see Allah is responding to your prayer and your needs. Because Allah knows. Whatever you want from Him is not to break. It's not going to bring a lot of goodness to you. So he do not respond to your prayer. That's why I say time you like something, but it's not good for you. There are times that you don't like that particular thing, but the thing keep on coming to you because that is better for you. Why? Allah knows what we know not. All this have something to do with taqdeer. What Allah have ordained. Whatever Allah choose for you, we must believe that is the best. That is how we tawakkal on Allah. It's just like today, brother and sister, you want to do a business. You want to be a successful businessman. You want to be a successful student. You want to be a successful employees. You want to be a successful son or daughter to your parent. What should you do? We all know what we should do. You must have the faith. You must do what Allah wants you to do. Even you have the right intention to do for the sake of Allah, the way you execute your plan, the way you plan to do whatever you want to do, make sure you follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad.
because Prophet Muhammad was sent to show us the way. Allah command the Prophet. The Prophet have to demonstrate and show us. From the day we were born until we die, everything is been laid out by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahu Akbar. He is the best example. The best khudwa. You must be committed to Allah. You must put your trust in Allah. And remember one prayer that the Prophet recommend us to do. After each of our fardu prayer, or inside our prayer before we give salam. Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Ask Allah to help us. Even you are doing good thing, you are going to remember Allah. Allahumma inni ala dhikrika. Oh Allah, help me to remember you. We want to remember Allah. We want to make zikir. We must know which kind of zikir is the best. And the best zikir is the zikir that was taught by his messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's the best. Allahu Akbar. And also, we continue asking Allah, Allahumma inni ala zikrika wa shukrika. Oh Allah, make me, help me to be grateful and be thankful to you in whatever little thing that I have received from Allah. Example, we should be grateful, thankful and be contented. And this is very important. And lastly, Allahumma ini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. We ask Allah, oh Allah, help me so that I perform the best ibadah. I perform everything in the best way, with the right spirit, with knowledge, with commitment, with understanding. Why we have to do that? After we have done all this, then you tawakkal Allah you will see the result, brothers and sisters. You are sure to experience something that has been missing until today. We always want the best, but we don't give Allah the best. We are not ready to please Allah with our heart, with our body, our well, but we only please Allah with our tongue. Just lip service. I share with you another example. If you know there is a disease, a virus going on, and it's true, it's been confirmed by people of knowledge. Not by politician, not by businessmen, but by people who are expert in that field, by doctors, all those who are involved in health, in saving life. Then they said, be careful. When you move anywhere, in the public, you must wear a mask. If you feel that there's some sign, your sore throat is there, you feel some bad thing is happening in your body, is responding very differently, go for a vaccine. Example. So you should try your best to follow the SOP. You cannot say, I tawakkal to Allah. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to wear my mask. If you think 
that the situation has changed, then you don't have to wait. Why must you make life difficult to yourself? To wear something that you don't need to wear it. But if the situation that you must is because yeah, this kind of disease is dangerous, it's an airborne example, then you should cover yourself, then you tawakkal to Allah. Remember the three sign of a believer number one when Allah's name is mentioned his heart respond and when the verses of Allah number two is recited his iman increase and to Allah he make tawakkal he rely on after that, Allazina yuqimuna salatu wa mimma rajaknahum. Those people who tawakkal to Allah must always remember to commit themselves to establish their prayer. Allazina yuqimuna salat wa mimma rajaknahum yunfiqun. If a person said, I am a believer I have tawakkal to Allah, but you don't even pray. That is not tawakkal. Tawakkal always follow with prayer. And Allah said, yuqimuna salah. Establish your prayer, meaning you should perform your prayer with kushok, with understanding, with knowledge. Not just Praying for the sake of praying. Or you are playing when you are praying. There's no spirit, no kushot, not connected. Your mind is somewhere else. You are reciting something, but your heart is not there. Your mind is not there. There's no kushot. So it is important when you, even you want to pray, Allah do not allow you to pray in your own way. He command you to follow his messenger. And that's why Prophet Muhammad was taught by Angel Gabriel how to pray. And then he command us by saying, Sallu kamara aytumuni usalli. Meaning now, after the Prophet was taught by Angel Gabriel how to worship Allah, then only he command his ummah, perform your prayer like how you seen me perform it. That is aqimus salah. If you don't know how to perform your prayer, follow the way of the Prophet, until today, you have failed. How can a Muslim who make declaration of ashadu Allah la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah until today, don't know how to perform his prayer following Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Just one man, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi You are safe. How can we excuse ourselves? Everything we want to do, if it's not La ilaha illallah for the sake of Allah, have no value. And if you're doing for the sake of Allah, Allah said, Muhammad Rasulullah, you must follow his messenger. We have fear. We follow so many people. And sometimes we don't even know who we are following. We are following our own way, our own style. That is wrong. And a person who established his prayer, who have a good connection with Allah, then he can rely on Allah better. Then he must not forget. When you said my relationship with Allah is good, you must also prove to yourself and to Allah that you are also have a good relationship between fellow mankind. How to have a good relationship? And that's why Allah said, "Allazina yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqnahum yuntiqun." Are those who connect themselves with Allah? 
and connect themselves with other people in helping one another by contributing, donating, making sadaqah to one another for the sake of Allah. Whatever we have is a gift from Allah. So we must be ready to give back to Allah. Then only Allah and with Ula'ika humul mu'minuna haqqa. Ula'ika humul mu'minuna haqqa lahum darajatun inda rabbihim wa maqfiratun. Yeah. Wa ajrun azim. These are the true believers. Because there is no tawakkal without iman. And there is no iman without amal. All are interrelated. Linked to one another. It's like bodily, physically, mentally, and spiritually. There is our al-qadim yeah, standard. Quality in our approach, in our tarbiyah. We always remind all our students of knowledge and our jama'ah. Don't forget BMS. Everything you do, it must bring benefit to your body, mind, and soul. And also we were reminded by Allah and our Prophet Wasallam. Those who have tawakkal also must be istiqamah, be consistent in their tawakkal. And that is very important. And that's why Allah said, Inna lazina qalu rabbuna Allah summa staqamu tatanazzalu alayhimul malaika alla takhafu wa la tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannati lati kuntum tuhadun. نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تستهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون Allah is telling us it's important those who say I have iman and I have all the tawakkal I also must be consistent and this is important brothers and sisters where a lot of people today are not aware the important to have this right spirit. Yeah? So we hope all of us who are following this program tonight is understanding, <clears throat> is trying to understand and is benefiting from what I'm sharing with you. So that we have the right spirit and understanding about the word tawakkal. You cannot just don't follow SOP and you just do tawakkal. Anything you do in life, brother and sister, you must do with knowledge. You must be very committed and precise and follow the SOP, the rule and regulation. When you follow all this by the beginning, you follow the adab of your connection with Allah. Your prayer. Because the prayer is your daily obligation, not a yearly obligation or once in your lifetime obligation. It's a daily obligation. It's like every day you eat, every day you drink. If you want to make sure that your body is healthy, then you tawakkal. To Allah, then you must work hard, make sure that you have the right food, right nutrition, a balanced nutrition, and make sure that you are in a good environment. Because the environment also can corrupt us. So, brother and sister, it's very important for all of us who want to rely on Allah to make tawakkal, understand. What we must do before we do tawakkal. If you want all your prayer and your deeds to be accepted, be rewarded, make sure you do everything according to the guidance of the Quran 
and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make it. Still follow? Up. Can can you hear me? Good, yeah. Because I don't know if from my side I see that sometimes my 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 uh, video stop for a while. But is is Alhamdulillah good. So this is something that I like to remind all my good brothers and sisters wherever you are. Even like when you are seeking knowledge, you want to have the right knowledge and right understanding. And that's why the Prophet even remind us: look at how careful, concerned our Prophet towards his ummah. When you want to seek knowledge, because there are two type of knowledge, and the Prophet remind us to say: Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafia. Wa a'unzubika min ilmin la yanfa. There are two types of knowledge. One is knowledge that benefit you and benefit others. One that knowledge that do not benefit you at all. It corrupt you. It make you a corrupt person. It make you a liar, a cheater in doing business. Then that knowledge is not useful at all. So anything you want to do, remember, it must be guided by the right knowledge and true and pure knowledge. Is ma call Allah subhanahu wa taala fi kitabihi in the Quran and wa ma call Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi sunnatihi as sahih. Pure knowledge is not opinion, feeling. No, it's what Allah said in His book, in the Quran. The book that is our reference, and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have conveyed to us through His Sunnah, His saying. This is pure knowledge. You follow this too. Nobody can turn you astray. But when you try to entertain opinion, hear say, dare say, what you say, what I say, then that is not pure anymore. Because Islam don't follow us, brothers and sisters. We have to follow Islam. Remember that Islam don't follow us. Allah don't follow us. We have to follow Him, and that's why Allah said, "This is my way." Wa anahaza sirati mustaqima. My way, follow my way. Fatabiuhu. And this is why the first, second, and the third generation of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was blessed. And they have the first. They have the title, Rodi Allahu An. Allah is so pleased with them because they are always there to please Allah. Whatever Allah want them to do, they only respond Samikna wa Atokna. Allahu An. The first generation, second generation, third generation, the best generation. Allahu An. After that, thing is getting more complicated and more confused. So, brother and sister, please remember how to have the right iman, how to make tawakkal, how to establish your prayer, and how to. Contribute, donate, sadaqah in the right way that please Allah 
and follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. By doing all this with all the guidance from the Quran sunnah, all of us will have a good ending, and Allah will accept our deeds, our prayer, and Allah subhanahu wa taala will respond to our needs, inshallah. So now I'm going to end my 45 minutes reminder uh, for the second session, the Q and A. Back to Brother Mushafiq. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. That was really benefiting. I personally got reminded about a lot of things. So Jazakallah khair for that one. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You are welcome. So we have already our first question. Uh, so. Uh, this brother is asking because of COVID, I felt tired of my situation. How can someone who is in a difficult situation remember to rely on Allah? Meaning, uh, the person is saying that he is tired. Yes. Well, he, he everybody was in is some tired. Situation. He was in some situation, and then because of the COVID. Because when he is having so, what is the situation that he is facing? He, he did not. Can he be more specific? He did not specify that. Okay. In general, nobody can escape from trial and challenges. It's how you look at all these trial and challenges. I give you one simple example that I always remind myself and all my good student of knowledge. Normally, in a normal situation, every one of us, especially the brothers, are very active outside. If you are a father or a husband, you hardly got time to spend with your children and your loved one because we are busy. So many things to do outside. With the COVID, it gives you an opportunity to spend more time at home. And you can still work from home. Now you can be with your children, engage with them, and also you are now at home with your family. So you have no excuse. Yet, I have no time. The time is there. But because we are not guided properly, we are not used to be at home. So when the COVID nineteen, until today, we have experienced few lockdown, and then we feel miserable. Look at our mother, who have been taking care of us, the children, day in day out. The mother was there with them. The mother never get upset, frustrated. The mother. Never feel depressed because they know it is really a investment to spend, engage, and give whatever you can give to your children. And COVID nineteen actually is a wake up call for us to focus more inside than outside. So it's up to how you look at all the trial and challenges. Every musiba, there is some wisdom behind. Wara akul masala saada. Remember, there's a saying. Yeah, behind all problem, if you have patience, you have the right knowledge and right tawakal, and you seek the right advice from the right scholar based on the Quran Sunnah. Then you'll find all the wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom behind the challenges that we are going through. So this is the simple answer that I can respond in general. If people who are really confused, they still must get connected to the scholar and seek their advice. You don't decide by yourself. You don't make any kind of conclusion by yourself because. You are not able to do it without the proper knowledge in understand the qadar and qadar. 
Actually, COVID-19 is a test to this ummah about qada and qadar. So when it happened, say qadr Allah wa ma sha'a fa'al. For example, yeah, Allah ordained this to happen. He have all the power to relieve us, to change the situation, and he do what he like. So this is all a reminder and a wake up call. That is my humble response to the question. Next. So the next question is, I would like to correctly understand the hadith. Uh, if only you rely on Allah, he will provide for you as he provides for the birds. Yes. This hadith is very clear. Even and a lot of ayah call you to rely on Allah. If you really rely on Allah, meaning you cannot just don't do anything and rely on Allah. You must do something like the bird. The bird has to keep on flying. If he just stay in, yeah, in the nest, then we do not know what's going to happen. But the bird will keep on flying and look for his risk. The risky is there already. Allah has provided the risk everywhere. Before He created us, He had prepared the risky for us. Allah said, Nahnu narzukuhum wa iyyakum. We are the one who provide all the provision for all of you and also for the future generation. Don't worry, as long as you do what you have to do. Remember, you have to move, you have to work hard. Every movement, there's a barqa. So it's true. The Prophet is just trying to show us the symbolic of a bird. He just has to fly and now he'll get his risk. So in the time of Omar, there was one incident after Fajr prayer when everybody is, have left the mosque, he found someone still sitting in the mosque, making long dua. So Omar asked him, what are you asking? What are you doing here? When everybody now is out and doing something and you are still inside the mosque, he said, I'm making dua. He said, the risky of Allah is not in the mosque, it's outside, go out. And that is the right way to make tawakkal. That is my second answer. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Uh, the next question is uh, a bit off topic, but this brother would like to know. Uh, the question is: This is off topic, but off topic. But I really want to ask the Sheikh how to control ourselves if we are someone who gets angry easily. If we know we get angry, we get angry easily. It's good. the The worst thing when we get angry easily and we are not aware of it. And that's why the companion they asked the prophet, "Ya Rasulullah, give me advice. Yeah, give me some very good advice." The prophet looked at him and the prophet said, "La takhdam. Don't get angry." And he asked again. Then. The Prophet said, La takhda, don't be get angry. Because the Prophet is a man of wisdom. He knows this person who is asking for guidance have that problem. So he said, control your anger. It's not that you cannot get angry for the right reason, but you must know how to control your anger. So how do you do other than that? When you cannot control what is sending, sit. Even while sitting, you are still very angry, lie down or quickly go and take your evolution. Make wudu and then pray to rakat sunat wudu. Because when you do that, when you are praying, you are not focusing on your problem now. You cannot. You must connect yourself with Allah. So you cut off yeah, the problem that you have with you for a while. Then you see, you find, yeah, 
you can see the 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 thing better you can understand thing better and you can move forward better but if you still fail i would advise the brother to get closer good scholar and always yeah talk to him maybe there are some other thing that you are having when the good scholar see you and the way you you communicate with him and get he will know how to help you to overcome your own problem and make you become a more calm person who can control your anger in the right manner that is my humble advice next alhamdulillah repeat the the question so uh, this a person has a friend asking me uh, what is a hadith in which we get the name that the name of the god is allah uh, this person is a chinese guy and who doesn't know mm -hmm. how to answer his friend okay you mean the question from this chinese yes. is the hadith that name the name of allah as god as the name of god as allah the name of god is as, allah yes now if you look at most of the hadith when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just like the the shahada the prophet said of the zikr la ilaha illallah example the word yeah, the best zikr Uh, the best uh, declaration is to say ashhadu alla i bear witness there's no other deities except allah so who is allah to us allah is our god our god name himself with many names yeah with a beautiful name but one of the name that he love us to call upon him is allah so there's many hadith when you say la ilaha illallah there's one of the thing there is none no other deities except allah that mean the only true god is allah Allah is the only one true God. Where other people may call any other deities and God, beside Allah, then He is not the true God. The real true God, give His name, and He like us to call Him with the name Allah. And He got a lot of other attribute: Al Rahman, Al Rahim, Al Malik, Al Qudus, Al Salam, but he love us to call him allah it's like you know when people want people to call you you introduce yourself with the name that you like people to call you with the same allah introduce himself as allah he now said ila 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 but allah kul huwallahu ahad say Allah is one. No, this is what, yeah. How Allah Rubul Alamin introduced Himself, and He want people to call Him with this name. I hope I have answered the question. Yes, yes. They replied the thanks. So I think they. Alhamdulillah. Uh, with that, we can conclude the session for tonight. If you like to. And let's say anything. Check. Alhamdulillah, brother and sister. Thank for those who are following us today. Uh, I do not know how many people is following, and from uh, whether all of you are in Malaysia or also from other country. But send my salam to the family, and please don't forget to keep on praying for everyone. And may Allah protect all of us from further 
the uh, trial and challenges that we are not ready to bear it. And may Allah grant us help and also may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our iman and our sabar so that we are ready to move forward to face all the new trial and challenges. So Alhamdulillah, it's Allah's ni'mah that we're able to spend some time together tonight. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you. And please remember, the knowledge that we have shared to you, please share it with your close family members, family, children, friends, and may Allah reward us by doing that. وَبِلَّهِ تَوْفِيقِي وَلَأَقْرِدَ أَوَانَا وَالْحَمْدُ لَهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ